Hi there everybody, in this video we're looking at the polysaccharide cellulose. So let's think about the structure of the molecule first of all. Cellulose is made up of beta glucose molecules. So here's the structure of the beta glucose. Um, I'm not going to put all of the hydrogen atoms in just because it gets a little bit uh, messy. Um, but these bits here show where there are also hydrogen atoms. Um, now, remember, the important thing about a beta-glucose molecule is that this hydroxyl group here is situated uh, above the ring, as opposed to an alpha-glucose molecule where it would be below the ring. So this is carbon-1, and our hydroxyl group is above the ring. So if I draw another beta-glucose molecule here, because cellulose is a polysaccharide, which means we have to join together lots of monosaccharides with our glycosidic bonds. So if we just maybe add some numbers in here to show our carbons, so carbon 1, 2, 3, 4 on this, uh, on this glucose, and then again carbon 1, 2, 3, carbon 4. So the beta-glucose molecules are going to join together with 1, 4 glycosidic bonds. Uh, just the same as in starch and is in glycogen, but this time it's beta-glucose instead of alpha-glucose. Now, to make that glycosidic bond, we have to uh, form a bond here between where the two hydroxyl groups are on carbon-1 and carbon-4, uh, but of course we're going to remove a water molecule. Now the problem is that because this is beta-glucose, and because this hydroxyl group on the carbon-1 is above the ring, that means that we cannot form a bond because you've got this hydroxyl group above and this hydroxyl group below the ring. And they're basically just, they're not in the right orientation, they're sort of not close enough together um, to be able to form a bond between them. So this is a problem. So at the moment, this means that you can't just have two beta-glucose molecules like that next to each other in exactly the same orientation um, and have a 1-4 bond between them. It doesn't work. So what we need to do is we need to rotate this second beta-glucose molecule. Um, just to help us understand this, remember that this ring, okay, this ring is actually like um, a flat plane. So what I've tried to draw here um, is try and make it look a little bit more 3D. So that ring there, imagine that as sort of being sort of flat. And then you've got um, this part here is above the ring. This hydroxyl group is above the ring but then we've got a hydroxyl group sticking below and below like that. So it's actually sort of very three-dimensional. So when we say right, rotate, if you imagine that you've got a line going through the middle and you're literally going to spin the molecule around on that axis. Um, and if you do that, if you spin it around on its axis, and I've just put the numbers in there so we'll go sort of one at a time, then there's our carbon-4, but this time because we've rotated it, the hydroxyl group now is above the ring. Okay, so that carbon-4 has been rotated, whereas before the hydroxyl group was below the ring on carbon-4, now it is above the ring. There's carbon-3, and again, if you look over here, on carbon-3, on this orientation, hydroxyl group's above the ring. When it's been rotated, the, carbon, the hydroxyl group is below the ring. So basically, all of those groups sticking above or below the ring are going to be reversed. The ones above are going to be below and the ones below are going to be above. Carbon 1 is important because this is then going to join to another glucose molecule over here. So carbon 1, we've now got the hydroxyl group below the ring. Whereas over here, carbon 1, the hydroxyl group is above. Okay, so it's swapped around as we have rotated it. So we can keep going all the way around like that. So now we've got a beta-glucose in one orientation and then the adjacent beta-glucose has been rotated 180 degrees. Okay, I'm going to get off rid of all the little bits we don't need. Um, not that we don't need them, but they sort of, they're sort they not necessary for understanding the next concept, okay? Oh, hang on, went a bit too fast there. Um, so let's think about uh, the, high, the glycosidic bond. So here's carbon-1. Here's carbon-4. Because we've inverted this, we've now got our hydroxyl group here, which means that both of these hydroxyl groups are now above the ring, 
which means they are then able to form a glycosidic bond. Okay, of course, when that happens, we know that we also lose a molecule of water. So we've now got a beta 1,4 glycosidic bond joining those two beta glucose molecules. So we've made our disaccharide. So to make cellulose, we just have to keep doing that over and over again for hundreds or thousands of uh, beta glucose molecules to make a big long chain. So if we just show another one here, so this beta glucose has to have the same orientation as the one over here. So like every other one, okay, will have the same orientation. So this one gets rotated and then gets rotated. So it's rotated 180 degrees each time. So you can see now, here's carbon one on this one, a hydroxyl group is below the ring. Carbon four, hydroxyl group below the ring, just like we had over here. So they are now both below the ring, which means they can make a 1,4 glycosidic bond. And this is how it works. So every other uh, or every glucose is inverted or rotated 180 degrees. And you can see that this glycosidic bond is sort of um, above. This glycosidic bond is below. And it will just continue like that along the chain. So in terms of how we say it, just to make it really clear, we can say adjacent beta glucose molecules are rotated 180 degrees. Okay, so that's a cellulose molecule, but then those molecules are arranged into things called microfibrils and fibers, so the structures get bigger. Um, so here is a cellulose microfibril. So you can see that we've got our glycosidic bonds up, down, up, down because of the rotation. And that's going to just continue, as I said, hundreds or thousands of molecules. So that's what we call a molecule, a straight chain, a, a, a polymer of beta glucose is our cellulose molecule. Now, if we have lots of those molecules, so here, each of these lines represents a molecule. OK, so in this in this example here, uh, we've got four molecules and they are parallel to one another. So they can be parallel because a molecule is a completely straight chain. There's no branching, there's no kinking at all. So they can lie very close to one another. And because they're very close to one another, we can get hydrogen bonds between the chains or between the molecules. So those hydrogen bonds um, form between different parts of the glucose. We've got obviously we've got lots of uh, we've got lots of hydroxyl groups there. Um, so we've got oxygens um, and we've got lots of hydrogens. So we can have lots and lots of hydrogen bonding. When you have 60 or 70 molecules arranged like this with hydrogen bonding in between, then we would call it a microfibril. So we wouldn't just have four, but this is just an example to show you. But 60 to 70 like that would form a microfibril. And the important thing here is that so hydrogen bonds are very weak. But because there are so many hydrogen bonds, um, you know, sort of all the way along, continuing for the, the whole length of each, each chain, then that combined strength is very high. So that makes our cellulose microfibrils very, very strong. And then if we say that this is a microfibril, OK, and then here's another microfibril. So if we put a few microfibrils next to each other, they together will form what we call a fiber. OK, so microfibrils arranged in parallel groups is called a fiber. Finally, those fibers arrange themselves. Um, if, for example, in a cellulose cell wall, if that's a fiber, then the fibers arrange themselves running at lots of different angles, sort of crisscrossing over each other. So a cellulose cell wall would have a structure um, a little bit like this, OK? So each of these is a fibre. So each fibre is made of 60 to 70 micro, uh, of, of lots of microfibrils, and each microfibril is made of 60 to 70 cellulose molecules. So we've got lots of hydrogen bonding within that. It's all cross-linked. It's very, very strong. Um, the other thing to mention, because of all those hydroxyl groups, um, and the hydrogen bonding that is forming within the molecule, 
Uh, it also means that hydrogen bonds can form with water. So cellulose is hydrophilic because it can form hydrogen bonds with water. Um, but because it's such a big molecule, even though it's hydrophilic, it's actually insoluble. And that's obviously important if you're going to have something which is a structural molecule. Um, it needs to be strong and rigid, um, which it is because of this sort of this cross, um, the way it, it crosses over each other. Um, but it also, you obviously need it to be insoluble. Something that's soluble would not be able to be a structural material. So it's structural um, because it, it stru it's very rigid, it's very strong, uh, which means it's structural. And it is insoluble because it's very large even though it's actually hydrophilic. Okay, I think that covers everything. Thank you.